Hello everyone, Chance here. Today I'll be doing a review of the ASG CZ Bren 805. This gun is really cool. It's very interesting. Uh, actually, really unique looking. Actually, for like a more AR style platform. It's not really an AR, but you know what I mean. One that takes a Stanag uh, M4 style magazine. And also, I just put my contacts in so it looks like I'm crying. So I'll probably look like this for about a minute or two. So deal with it. So let's waste no time. Let's just dive right into the review. The upper on this gun is metal. The lower half is a polymer. Uh, the all the pins and stuff are all metal, but the mag release buttons and the fire selector switch is a polymer. Uh, stock is a polymer. Uh, all the rails are metal though. Uh, outer barrel course is metal. Uh, the stock is foldable, which is a nice little touch. I don't use that ever. I think it's stupid. Honestly, put that on guns. Just not stupid. I shouldn't say that. It's just not practical for my style. I never fold it. The only time I'd ever use this is if I'm storing it or putting it in the vehicle. So it never hurts to have that, but I still prefer to have a metal buffer tube type gun just because these can break. This one, I don't know how easily it will break, but you got to think if that's polymer and you fall on it incorrectly, that polymer will break really easily compared to like an actual metal buffer tube. At least in my opinion, it would. The iron sights do pop up, of course, just like that. And they reset down just like that. Out of the box, the accuracy is really respectable. Uh, it's average in my opinion. Uh, when I did the review of the ASG Scorpion, uh, the accuracy was unbelievable and that was a barrel length that was half of what this is and the accuracy was unbelievable out of the box. Uh, the hop up unit wasn't that whoopy in it. It also was a short barrel so that also is kind of a hard point to prove saying that the hop up unit's mediocre when uh, the barrel was so short. But uh, this one does have a very good hop up unit in it. Uh, the hop up unit is very effective. It's just the accuracy is average. So I would recommend getting a tight bore barrel put into this, and this thing would be shooting fucking amazingly because the hop up in it is really good. I don't know how well you can see into that. Uh, as you can see, it's a dial type uh, unit. Uh, the reason I almost don't like it, I like it because it's effective, but this is a weird gripe. As you can see on the top of the rail system right here, uh, it's all numbered. It's all numbered, so that way if you take off a sight or optic, you know exactly where you left it before. And it's also on the side uh, rails is also numbering. And I think that's fucking cool. I think that's a nice little touch. But if you're going to go to the extreme to number that stuff, why wouldn't you number the hop-up unit? A player like myself, honestly, I'm not changing BB weights often, but there's times where I'm on the field all the time where I need a mag and someone will throw me a magazine full of 20s. And I personally use two eights, so I have to turn my hop up unit a lot down, like way down to get it to shoot straight. And I have to color my unit. I'll actually do a dash for 28s and then I'll do a half a dash for where 20s are sighted in. And that's how I roughly get my hop up unit adjusted on the fly, depending on BB weight. And if they were going to number this, I would have really liked to see a number unit on the hop up unit itself. And that's a pretty big, uh, it sounds like I'm being super, super uh, critique about it. Uh, I'm trying like to critique the gun too much, but I just felt like if you're going to number that, you might as well number the unit itself. Now, when Fox Airsoft sent me this gun to review, I didn't get a lot of information on it. I also did not ask for a lot of information on it. Uh, and I apologize for that, but the ASG Scorpion had a MOSFET in it that had an FCU in it, a fire control unit. And that fire control unit, I thought ruined the gun. I don't even know if you can reprogram it or if you could take it out. I don't know a lot about those types of stuff for uh, AEGs. I'm not really big into FCUs and MOSFETs and stuff. I like running MOSFETs, but I, the ones I run don't have FCUs in them. And uh, it's just the way I like to run them. I don't like that extra shit, honestly, me personally. Uh, I'm a semi-auto only player, so the MOSFET's just for better trigger response and also so my trigger contacts don't fry. But... I don't know if this has a MOSFET in it. I don't think it has the FCU because if you remember my ASG Scorpion review, I hated the FCU. It made it so if you shot this gun fast and semi, the motor would shut all power off because it is trying to pretty much warn you that you're going to damage the, uh, the gun. So when you would shoot it fast and semi-auto, the gun would just lock up and stop shooting. You'd have to wait a second and then the program would reset and then you could shoot it again. And it was stupid because a player like myself that's really aggressive and always shooting constantly, like I'm really into like fast trigger response and stuff and snap shooting and it's a cqb gun the squirping was and it wasn't even usable in cqb with someone that has a trigger finger like myself so that's why i did not like that gun it performed really well it was just that trigger response was disgustingly bad this thing on the other hand it performs just fine the trigger response is great i never have any problems with it i run a 7.4 lipo in it and i hate 7.4s i just think the trigger response is disgusting with them that's just my opinion i i just 
don't like to run seven fours. They're just so slow with their trigger response, and it makes me just cringe personally. That's just my opinion. But uh, this gun holds a seven four very well. I will show you the battery compartment in a second, and trust me, this is the biggest flaw of this gun. Other than what I'm about to show you, this gun's performance is good. Uh, it's reliable. Uh, I really like ASG. I just like their CZ model of guns. I really like them. I have the PO9 as well. I just like them a lot. Um, the gun overall is very ergonomic. Everything on it is ambidextrous. It is really cool. You can also put the charging handle on this side. Everything on it is fully ambidextrous in every way possible. And it's a very ergonomic feeling gun. And it has a lot of value to it. And you get your money's worth. But I'm going to show you how awful this battery compartment is. So once you remove this back pin, the gun will just slide down the stock wheel, just like that. And I don't know how well you could see up into there. This right here is where you would adjust your uh, quick change uh, spring system. If you wanted to go from, let's say this gun's at 400 FPS, if you wanted to go down to 350 or something for CQB, you can just get a flathead screwdriver, pull that out and change your spring. ASG is really good about making uh, their guns easy to access for changing the springs. And that's why I really like ASG. I like features like that that make it easy for the air softer. But as you can see up here, you have about that much space, like literally an inch, maybe a little over an inch to work with for a battery. And you need a, a two panel LiPo or a stick LiPo that's about a thousand milliamps. That's it. That's all I can get in here. I have a thousand milliamp three panel 11.1 that is literally just this big when you push all the panels together and it won't fit. It's just too fat. Um, it is by far the worst compartment I've seen just because you can't even run a peck box with this. Let's say... You wanted to run a peck box in it you can't how are you gonna run a peck box it's in the gun there's no way for you to run a peck box in this no way possible if it was at least wired to the front you could run a peck box up here or if it was somehow in the buffer tube somehow uh you, maybe you can't really run a peck box but that would be a little easier but this compartment at first i thought it was cool oh awesome it's out of the fucking way but it is so small and i know to have a gearbox and stuff in the body of the gun uh you don't you won't get a lot of space and i understand that but it's just too much. Like, there is no way you can get anything probably of above a 7.4 in here. And if you can get an 11.1 in here, please send me the link to whatever battery you are using because you need it. It's almost like you need a HG needs to make a proprietary battery or something to fit this gun. And that is my biggest gripe of this. I'm a casual pickup game style player. I don't go to Milsim events. I personally just don't like the Milsim experience that it brings. I like just pickup games. I like just CQB, a lot of fast action pace and stuff. So I don't go through a lot of batteries in a day, but... When I play, I like 11 ones and stuff because the fast trigger response and they just make my gun cycle better. And I just, I just like to run 11 ones and to be forced to run a seven, four in here, even though it runs a seven, four very well, it's just, it's just not my style. I just really wish they could have made it just a little bigger to fit an 11 one in here a little easier. And it's just frustrating. It's just a really bad battery compartment. And that is my biggest gripe of this gun. Other than that, though, the externals are amazing. It is heavy, though. This You would think since half of it is polymer, actually most of the gun is polymer since the stock and lower half and stuff is, it would be pretty light. This gun is actually fairly heavy. I can't give you an exact estimate on how much it weighs, but I'll just say it's more than the Transform 4, and I also have a KWA M16BR, and this is heavier than that. Uh, it's probably like over nine pounds, I'm guessing. I could be wrong. I'm not good at estimating, but just take my word for it that this gun is pretty heavy. One more thing I almost forgot. When I play a lot, I switch a lot from left, right hand. I just switch a lot. I play a lot of CQB, so I'm constantly switching hands. With my thumb on this side, I'll always catch myself when I hold the rifle. I'll always accidentally click the thing into safety on accident. Just for me shooting the rifle like this, I'll accidentally click it. Let's say if it's in that, I'll somehow click it in mid game into safety. And I think that's just a design flaw kind of in the gun. It's kind of hard to in game because you know with an M4, you'll feel your thumb and an M4 it goes safe, semi, full auto. So wherever you feel it, it's easy to recognize what uh, a position you are in in your fire selector. In this one, since it's so close, it's full auto, semi, safe. It's so close that sometimes I might be in full auto thinking I'm in semi because I'll feel it and go, yeah, I'm in semi. Or sometimes I'll feel it and think I'm in safe, but I'm actually in semi. And those are just annoying because there's multiple times where I'll pop out and shoot at someone, but I'm in set, uh, safe. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I have to click it down, switch it. And now they already know where I'm at because I just popped out of cover, made this huge old ordeal that I just missed or the gun uh, didn't fire. And that's just a little gripe. So overall, 
my gripes with the gun have nothing to do with performance. Uh, the gun performs unbelievably well. Uh, I actually really like it. So at the end of the day, you get a very ergonomic, ambidextrous platform gun that is externally durable, internally reliable. It performs very well. The only thing, like I said, is the fire selector switch I hate and the battery compartment I despise. Uh, those are my only two gripes, but as the gun performs and it's externals and stuff, it's phenomenal. This gun is amazing. I really like it out of the box. It's a pretty good, it's a pretty good buy for how much it costs. I believe it's around $350. I don't know the exact price. I'll throw it up on screen, of course, but yeah, this gun is very um, unique and it's ergonomic. And what I like about it is a lot of guns that are unique. Let's say like even the scar, me personally, I love the way scars look and it's different than an M4 externally. Technically it looks different. It's kind of more unique. But when you use it, they're too bulky and stuff, and they're not comfortable. And a lot of guns that you use that are more unique that aren't M4s aren't comfortable. There's a reason M4s are so popular, and it's because they're ergonomic. They're really comfortable, and they're easy to handle. The HG Bren, I think, is the best thing to it. It is the most ergonomic non-M4 system, non-M4 platform I think you can get, in my opinion, at least in recent couple years, at least in my opinion. You can go to foxairsoft.com. There will be a link down in the description to this product if you want to look up more uh, details on this gun. I really like it. So, yes, I would highly recommend this is uh, Fonsify approved. I really dig it. So, yeah, let me know if you guys want to see more reviews and also comment down in the comment section what guns you want to see me review. You guys have a good day. Be safe and take care. Peace. Bye. If you really care,